Now on 18 Eyewitness News. A boil water order has been issued for parts of Farmington. Also, art students will be at MAC this weekend. Plus, the Madison County Emergency Management Team will be having a tabletop exercise. All these stories and my latest storm tracker weather forecast coming up. 18 Eyewitness News starts right now. Coverage you can count on. This is 18 Eyewitness News. Hello everybody, I'm Dustin Cobb. Here are some of the stories that we're working off for you on 18 Eyewitness News. The City of Farmington Public Works Department has issued a boil water order for several businesses along Karsh Boulevard in Farmington. They include McDonald's, a country bar, a contractor bored through a water main in the area, which prompted the outage and boil order. For more information, you can contact the City of Farmington at 573-756-0608. And temperatures right now at the 6 o'clock hour are on the warm side. 65 in Festus, 68 St. Genevieve. Further south we go, a little bit warmer. 74 in Piedmont, 75 right now in Cape Girardeau. Going through the evening to this evening, showers and thunderstorms likely around 71 degrees at 7 p.m., 68 by 9, and by midnight, we're down to 66. Showers and thunderstorms expected for your Wednesday and could be on the severe side. I'll give you all the details coming up in just a little bit. Our students from kindergarten through high school will be culminating at the Mineral Area College Fieldhouse on Saturday for this year's art show. Mineral Area Council on the Arts Director Roxanne Cummings tells 18 Eyewitness News that the show has been going on for 14 years. This is our 14th year of doing the art show. It started as the brainchild of one of our members, Sue Heimberger. It started as a small art show. We just asked a few schools around the area, and it's grown now to where we have every school from the Marquand, Fredericktown area, north to Sunrise School District, and everything in between. The event gets underway at 10 a.m. on Saturday and will run until 1 p.m. with the awards presentation following. Roxanne says that everyone is a winner. Everyone should get an award because uh, just to be chosen means you were the best of your class to come to this. So everyone who exhibits is a winner. There will be between 1,000 to 1,500 pieces of school art at the show. Governor Jay Nixon announced Monday that Missouri Department of Revenue Director Brian Long has resigned. The resignation is effective immediately. The governor has named Deputy, Deputy Director rather, of Revenue John Mollenkamp as Acting Director of the Department. Mollenkamp is a native of Rolla and has served as Deputy Director of Revenue since 2011. Prior to taking that position, he was a clinical professor of law at Cornell Law School. Log has been named direct or had been named rather director of revenue in December of last year. It was the first partnership of its kind in Missouri when Central Methodist University and Middle Area College joined in 1989 to offer the 2 plus 2 program to community college students who wanted to pursue a bachelor's degree. Now the Middle Area College Board of Trustees unanimously voted to approve a five-year renewal of the 24-year agreement between the two post-secondary institutions. CMU site coordinator Jeff Williams says that this agreement is great for both CMU and MAC. The two entities renegotiated, which turned out to be a great thing because essentially I believe that, you know, we were still operating with the agreement that was made in 1989 with very few changes. And as you know, the world and education has changed a great deal since then. So that caused both entities to kind of go over it with fine tooth comb and, and come up with something that is going to work better for both Mineral Area College and Central Methodist University. CMU has offered courses of instruction and degree programs, including the Masters of Education degree program on the campus of Middle Area College in Park Hills since 1989. And when we come back, the Madison County Emergency Management Team will be having a tabletop exercise. That story and much more when we return. We'll be right back. For 15 years, Heartland Furniture and Appliance has been the leader in price for restonic bedding. Whirlpool built Crossley Appliances, Frigidaire Appliances, Sofa Sets, Recliners, Accent Furniture, and White's Metal Detectors. Same day delivery with no waiting. We are fast becoming this area's leader in the home furnishing and appliance business. Need a little cash? Payday loans are available in each store. We'd love to have you come see us at one of our three locations on both sides of Main Street in Piedmont, Business 60 in Dexter, and next to Current River Ford in Donovan. Heartland Furniture and Appliance, 223-3200. Let it wash you this morning. 
How can heat also be cool? When it comes from targeted induction technology, which uses electromagnetic waves to quick heat your pan, boiling up to 40% faster, while the surface around it stays perfectly cool to the touch. It's faster, hotter, and, well, cooler. Hi, Bob Seaball at Seaball Furniture and Appliance. Come and see this and other great features and benefits that will amaze you. Now on sale at Seaball Furniture and Appliance in downtown Fredericktown. You're watching 18 Eyewitness News with Fred Dawkins and Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp. 18 Eyewitness News continues. And welcome back. 71-year-old Earl Tripp is currently in the Madison County Jail facing six counts of statutory sodomy based on reports of sexual encounters with a minor that occurred over a five-year period on a regular basis. Tripp is charged with two counts of first-degree statutory sodomy, Class A felonies, and four counts of second-degree statutory sodomy. His bond was set at $50,000 cash only. The sexual encounter started in 2001 with a male child who was 11 at the time. The victim told police the incidents occurred approximately twice a month and usually outside the suspect's home. A council status hearing is scheduled for April 18th. The Madison County Emergency Management Team will be having a tabletop exercise on Wednesday. The topic is mass evacuation planning. Director Becky Hutt tells 18 Eyewitness News what the goal of the exercise is. Goal is strengthen the Madison County Emergency Management mass evacuation plans, also to assist um, business and industry in um, developing or strengthening their mass evacuation plans. Hot mentions that the focus is uh, the vulnerable populations of our community. The event will take place on Wednesday at 9 a.m. with registration beginning at 8 a.m. in the Black River Electric Cooperative Meeting Room. For more information, you can contact Becky at 573-783-2747, extension 3002. The Southeast Missouri Food Bank is giving away food. The event is Saturday at 10 a.m at the Clearwater Family Youth Center in Piedmont. Some of the guidelines for the event include one, only one person rather, per household may receive food. You must be present to receive food and you may be asked to provide a picture ID. This is sponsored by the Community Churches of the Clearwater Ministerial Alliance. For more information, call Misty McGowan at 573-651-0400. And when we come back, I'll have your latest Missouri State headlines. We'll be right When someone comes in a mental area's emergency department, our focus is giving them the best treatment in the quickest manner possible. We track every single patient, sending the doctors information before they even walk in the room. We have dedicated x-ray and CT equipment in our emergency department. We don't have to waste any time running all over the hospital. We know that minutes count in an emergency, and you can count on ER Plus at Mineral Area Regional Medical Center. With extended hours, let the UPS store pack and ship your gifts. Hi, I'm Steve from the UPS store in Farmington, Missouri. Me and my staff would like to wish you and yours a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.
And welcome back. The University of Missouri, Kansas City can now brag that it has the nation's greenest campus with an 86% recycle rate. The school ranked number one in the grand champion category of the annual Recycle Mania competition. More than 260 campuses vied for the title. Through the competition, colleges and universities try to see who can collect the largest amounts of recyclables. The school began several new efforts this year. Among them, the library worked with another organization to recycle books and peer mentors helped students recycle or compost their trash. There also was a recycling competition and a document shredding event. Well, authorities say an eight-month-old girl was killed and her mother injured when a driver hit a bus stop in the St. Louis suburb. The Missouri Highway Patrol says the driver apparently had some type of medical problem before losing control of his car and hitting the bus stop Monday in Norwoods, or excuse me, Northwoods rather. The car struck 39-year-old Erica Hughes and her daughter, Aliyah Hughes, who was in a stroller while they waited at the bus stop. Erica Hughes and the car driver were hospitalized with serious injuries. A lawsuit filed Monday by the American Civil Liberties Union claims a free speech rights of Ron Paul delegate were violated when he was arrested outside the Republican caucus in suburban St. Louis last year. Brent Stafford of O'Fallon was part of the St. Charles County Republican Central Committee caucus March 17th of last year. That grew so testy, it was canceled. The Stafford was arrested outside the high school gym where the caucus was held as he tried to gather other supporters of Ron Paul. He was charged with trespassing but later acquitted by a St. Peter's Municipal Judge. And authorities in central Missouri believe a man found dead in a house fire set the blaze to hide a burglary. Firefighters found the body of 23-year-old Miller County resident Brett Comer the night of April 8th in the burnout home near Eldon. An autopsy showed he died of smoke inhalation. The Miller County Sheriff's Office said Monday investigators now believe Corder, or excuse me, Comer was burglarizing the unoccupied rental house and started a fire to cover up the crime. A gas can was found in the house near a stove. Comer's car was in the, uh, excuse me, Comer's car with his driver's license was parked outside the small home. Well, when we come back, I'll have your latest storm tracker weather forecast. We're tracking some severe weather throughout southeast Missouri. All the details when we come back. Now, here's your storm tracker 18 weather forecast with chief weathercaster Dustin Kopp. And welcome back. Temperatures right now are in the warm side here in southeast Missouri. 72 here at the studio, and that's what it feels like. We are seeing some showers and thunderstorms through the area. East wind about 7 miles per hour. However, temperatures are all over the board throughout the area. 65 in Festus right now, 68 in St. Genevieve. Further south, we go a little bit warmer, 77 right now in Poplar Bluff and 72 in Van Buren. Weather headlines for southeast Missouri. Thunderstorms will continue off and off for the next few days. Some of those storms could be on the severe side, especially Wednesday afternoon into the Wednesday night time frame. Those are, could be the severe weather situations. And temperatures on the warm side, but cooling off for Friday. Unfortunately, with the severe weather, it does look like they have the same characteristics as the storms that we saw last week, with, especially in the St. Louis area where they saw some tornadoes. So. Here's your setup for your Wednesday. We're going to start off with some showers and thunderstorms off to the north and west. They'll essentially scoot our way, bringing us showers and thunderstorms. We do have that chance of showers and thunderstorms this evening at 7 p.m., 71 degrees, 68 by 9. By midnight, we're down to 66. So, forecast for tonight. We, again, are going to see those showers and thunderstorms. Temperatures in the 50s for most areas, lower 60s down south. Then for tomorrow, warm it up. It's going to be a warm one out there. It's 81 degrees here in Farmington, 85, 86, 87 degrees, depending on where you are. It's going to be a warm one. For the north, a little bit cooler at 83 with those showers and thunderstorms. Heating of the day is going to give us that fuel to give us the possibility of some severe weather. Thursday, 75 showers and thunderstorms ending Thursday night, Friday, plenty of sunshine, 52, mostly sunny of 58 on Saturday, warming back up into the lower 60s Sunday, Monday in the mid 60s, however, some showers return, and then Tuesday, showers continue with a high of 63. And don't forget, we, let's look at that weather forecast for the weekend again. We can always wish to get closer to the weekend, shall we? 58 degrees at sa on Saturday with mostly sunny skies, 62, and partly sunny on your Sunday. 
And you can get the latest weather information on our website, kdkzat.com. Follow me on Twitter at DustinCop underscore KDKZ and like me on Facebook at DustinCop KDKZ. Your health is brought to you by Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy. If you or a loved one has been implanted with a pelvic mesh, commonly called a bladder sling, you may be entitled to a significant cash award. Many women implanted with this device have suffered discomfort, excruciating pain, and even incontinence. The FDA has even warned that pelvic meshes may cause serious injuries, including pain, scarring, infection, incontinence, and discomfort. If you or a loved one has been implanted with a pelvic mesh, call the Rely on Group at 800-796-6986. And still to come, as technology most of us take for granted, but not for stroke survivors, how cell phone science could help rehab efforts next in Health News. Prom season is upon us. Want to dress for less? I'm Stacy Johnson. Watch the tips ahead on Money Talks News. And welcome back. Every 40 seconds, someone suffers a stroke in this country. The good news is most of them will survive, but many will have to endure the challenges of rehabilitation. Having a stroke often means learning to walk again, which is never easy. But a new approach could help. As Clark Powell shows us, researchers are using everyday cell phone technology to try to help stroke survivors make new strides. We use them every day for everything from talking to texting, from finding directions to playing games. Now, cell phone technology is being tested in a new way to try and help those who survive strokes learn how to walk again. This is the first time this technology has ever been used in stroke uh, anywhere in the country or anywhere else in the world. Dr. Stephen Page of the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center is leading this innovative study. Here's how it works. Therapists strap small sensors onto the legs, arms, and chest of a patient, then sync them to a computer. Those sensors, the same as in smartphones, talk to each other, keeping track of where they are and what direction they're moving. Same technology you use when you're playing a video game or when you're taking your cell phone and turning it upside down or turning it sideways and the picture adjusts to that. Only here, the sensors chart every move during therapy, logging how well a patient is moving their arms and legs. There are sophisticated programs that use similar technology, but they require rooms full of high-tech equipment. This is different. And the nice thing about this technology is we can do it anywhere. We can do it up steps, we can do it in a kitchen. Anywhere that walking or balance is important is a place where we can capture how well the person's moving. It's a concept that's not lost on Kelly Franklin, a stroke survivor who knows the struggles of therapy firsthand and how much further technology can take her. Oh, long way. I, um, I couldn't even sit up straight. I couldn't even sit up about a year and a half ago. Now she's gotten rid of a wheelchair and a walker and is looking forward to someday losing her cane as well. At Ohio State's Wexner Medical Center, this is Clark Powell reporting. Researchers say that cell phone technology could someday allow patients to do some physical therapy at home while therapists monitor their movements and progress over the internet. During this study, doctors will use this technology on patients for 10 weeks, tracking precisely how much they are able to help patients move their arms and legs as a result. Well, spring brings showers, flowers, and dances. Prom season is just around the corner, and for many students, that means dress shopping. But expert Stacy Johnson shows us some ways to save on those dresses. Shopping for prom dresses takes time and money. A study last year by Visa said that families spend between $700 and $1,900 on prom. That's a staggering number. So we found some ways you might be able to find a dress for a little less. Hitting dress shops? Look for past season sales. Like designer duds? Rent one for a fraction of the retail cost from a shop or an online site like renttherunway.com. Get creative and sew your own or customize an existing dress. Thrift shops can also be a great place to start. No budget for shopping? No problem. Get together with your friends and have a dress swap. There are also free prom dresses for young women who qualify through national organizations such as donatemydress.org. Bottom line, there are plenty of ways to find a beautiful prom outfit without breaking the bank. And when you do find one, here's an idea. Sell it when you're done with it, or at least donate it. 
Want more information to save on your prom? Just go to moneytalksnews.com and do a search for prom. For Money Talks News, I'm Stacy Johnson. As Stacy said, he's got more information and links at his website. To get there, just go to our website, kdkz18.com, and click on the Money Talks link under the Lifestyles menu. And coming up in sports, all Missouri runners in the Boston Marathon have been accounted for. The Cards have a good game on Monday, and in September, there's going to be a different kind of ball game going on at Bush Stadium. It's all coming up here in Sports Zone. Tips to make you money delivered daily. The totally free Money Talks newsletter. Sign up now and get my money makeover video, a $50 value, as my gift. MoneyTalksNews.com Attention, Accutane warning. If you have Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, or inflammatory bowel disease, it may have been caused by the acne drug Accutane. Accutane victims have recently been awarded millions of dollars. Do not delay. There are time deadlines to file a claim. Call the Rely On Group now to be connected with an experienced attorney. There is absolutely no risk on your part. You don't owe us a penny unless we are successful. Call the Rely On Group at 800-698-3105. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now to get the new talking meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs. And they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. For more information, call one. This is Sports Zone, only on 18 Eyewitness News. There were 207 runners from Missouri who competed in Monday's Boston Marathon. Some runners from Missouri just went across the finish line as the bombs exploded, but are all okay. All runners at this point from Missouri have been accounted for. The St. Louis Cardinals scored all of the runs in the first three innings, including a seven-run second inning as the Cardinals won 10-6 Monday night in Pittsburgh. Alan Craig drove in three runs. John Jay and Matt Holliday added two runs apiece to back Lance Lynn, who improved to 2-0 on the year. And Southeast Missouri State will play the rival Southern Illinois in the first NCAA football game to be held at Bush Stadium on September the 21st. The Red Hawks and the Salukis were initially scheduled to play in Cape Girardeau before officials from both institutions reached an agreement with the Cardinals to move that game to Bush Stadium. Southeast Missouri has 24 players from the St. Louis area on its football roster and returning home to play in a top-notch facility with extra media spotlight will be extra special. Kickoff is set for 1 p.m. Central Time. That's today in sports. Fred and Dustin, guys, it's back to you. Thanks a lot, Aaron. Looking at your forecast for the rest of the CBD, we're going to be seeing off and on showers and thunderstorms. Temperature at 7 p.m., 71 degrees, 68 by 9, and by midnight, we're down to 66. That does it for 18 Eyewitness News. Hope you have a good night. We'll see you back here tonight at 10 o'clock. When you see news happening in your area, let us know about it. You can call our news department at 573-701-9590 or email us at news at dawkinsbroadcastgroup.com. Coming up tonight on KDKZ Channel 18.